My next guest just won this past weekend at UFC 222. He knocked out Mike Pyle in the first round at UFC 222 on March 3rd. Zach, what's going on, man? How are you? Doing good. Real good. Enjoying the week off after the big win. I, I imagine so. And, man, could that fight have gone any better? You went out there. You got the first finish in the UFC that you've had in your career. And uh, you really made a statement in that fight. Yeah, it really couldn't have gone any better. You know, uh, it was a win that I really needed. And I uh, definitely wanted to get back to my finishing ways. And uh, I feel like there were some eyes on the fight because it was his uh, announced retirement fight. So a uh, good way to go out there, get a finish uh, with some new fans, you know, new people watching. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't take any punishment, you know, uh, so I can prolong the, the fight career and keep it going. Yeah, and you don't get paid by the hour either, right? So it's nice to get in there and get a, get a quick win. Um, I, I kind of know the answer to this already, but I'll ask anyways. Uh, you know, before the fight when we talked, you kind of called your shot. You said it was going to be an early finish. If, if not, it would it'd go a little bit longer. But was there anything at all that sort of surprised you about him in this fight, even though it was pretty short? Uh, no, I mean, I know he's a good fighter. Um, you know, I was just trying to set up – I was using my jab to set up some other things that were coming later. But, you know, he did a good job uh, – you know, blocking some shots and stuff like that and moving pretty well uh, for his age and all that, you know, uh, but I wasn't surprised. Uh, you know, we hadn't really got too much into the fight to where there was like any takedown attempts or, you know, too many spinning techniques or clinch work, some things that he's, you know, known for. So um, it all it all went pretty well. I stayed aggressive early on, um, you know, I was throwing some heavy shots almost right off the bat and, uh, happen to happen to get through. So, what well, good? I'd say so. Um, how did you celebrate after the fight? Um, you know, whenever we fight, you never know. Uh, depending on where you're fighting, what time you're going to be fighting at. So, I fought in the UFC from anywhere from uh, one in the morning down in Brazil to ten in the morning in New Zealand. Uh, this was like perfect timing. It was uh, it was like four thirty to five p.m. is when I was fighting in that in that time era that time zone right there so um it was like perfect that's kind of like when i do most of my training felt really natural didn't feel too early or too late in the day and it gave us a lot of time to celebrate afterwards so you know being in vegas there tons of stuff to do um i was able to go out and have dinner you know with some friends and family and then you know do a little bit of gambling and just kind of enjoy some good conversation over uh, a drink and stuff like that but Nothing too crazy. No, that's good. Sounds classy. I, I, I think that's great. You know, nice uh, have like a nice steak or something or nice really a solid dinner and, you know, really sort of soaking uh, the fight and everything like that as opposed to going to a club where you can't really talk to anyone and you don't really strike me as a club guy anyway, so, which is a good thing. No, not, not anymore, you know, getting a little older now, so those days are kind of behind me. What was the feedback from the UFC? Did, did they give you, sort of tell you anything after the matchup or is that just, uh, I guess, just they'll talk to your management and stuff? Yeah, I'm going to talk to my manager and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it's funny, once you get done with a win, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of uh, interviews and a photo shoot and stuff to go to immediately after. Um, some people always have asked me, because I, I almost, uh, in some of my split decision wins where it goes all 15 minutes, I'm almost like still out of breath doing some of the interviews and stuff like that. And then when you don't win, it's pretty much just like, yeah, go back to your locker room, like, uh, at least at this point, you know, I'm not like a, a big name or, you know, a, a champ or anything like that. So um, when you lose, it's kind of just head back to the locker room. When you win, you got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Um, so I was just kind of busy immediately after the fight um, talking to, you know, UFC reporters and stuff like that. And um, yeah, a lot of people wanted to, you know, talk about the finish and then also just the fact that, you know, it was Mike's last fight. So. What about the fans on social media and things like that? Did you get a lot of positive feedback just from the way the fight ended? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, and I got a lot of positive uh, support leading into the fight uh, from people, you know, outside of my friends and family and stuff that have just uh, seen me fight so far. And and I was happy to, you know, get a win for for my fans and, and get back to the, the finishes. And, and is there sort of a weight lifted off your shoulders? Because, you know, I mentioned it off the top. It was your first finish in the UFC. Your first finish, actually, I think since 2015. It must have been nice to finally go in there and, uh, you know, uh, get a finish in a fight. Yeah, I almost kind of felt like a, a hitter slump in baseball or something. But now I feel like <clears throat> I, I got back to that aggressive uh, fight style and it felt good and felt natural. And uh, I didn't have to, like, worry about winning and worry about, like, 
my job and stuff so much. You know, I've had now five fights in the UFC, and I feel comfortable in there. And coming off of a win, I can I can stay aggressive and go after another finish in my next fight. And uh, did you talk to Mike at all after the fight? Yeah, I did. Um, I I just caught him briefly. We you know we took a picture together. In fact, I just posted on my social media. Um, you know, probably one of the coolest guys um, I've ever fought, uh, as well as just. I mean, obviously a legend and pioneer of the sport and stuff like that, but not only a great fighter, but a super cool dude to go along with it. Uh, seems like a really good dad and stuff to his kid and uh, funny guy, great sense of humor and all that all, all the way around. Just a really cool guy. So uh, it was a great experience fighting him. Yeah. You mentioned a ba- baseball reference earlier. Do you follow baseball or did you ever watch it growing up? There, there's a reason for this. I'll explain in a second. Okay. Uh, yeah. When I was growing up, baseball was like everything I lived and breathed. Okay. So I wasn't one of these kids that did martial arts as a kid, or I didn't wrestle until I got to high school. So um, yeah, baseball, you know, Little League Baseball, I like everything all about it. And when I was a kid, uh, watching Sports Center every night and all that kind of thing. This brings me to my, my second question. Do you remember a pitcher by the name of A.J. Burnett? He used to play for the Pirates, played for the Yankees, played for the Blue Jays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't you think he looks yep. just like Mike, Mike Pyle? Yes, yes, he does. Okay. Yeah, that, wow, I never even thought about that, but <laughs> totally looks just like him, yeah. There you go. I had to bring that up just because uh, we're, we're not going to get to talk about Mike Pyle again. So so there you go. Um, when are you looking to get back in there? You mentioned getting the quick finish. Um, I imagine you want sort of a quick turnaround, or are you looking to take some time off? Um, I am healthy, and, um, you know, three fights this year would be great. Um, sometime early summer, if it was June 9th in the Chicago card, that'd be awesome. If, uh, if we can get anything over summer, that'd be pretty good timing. I feel healthy. Like I said, I didn't take any damage. Uh, it was a pretty short training camp getting ready for this one. So it wasn't like this long grueling thing where I went in there with a, a lot of banged up, uh, little injuries and stuff like that. I feel really good to go and kind of want to keep the momentum going. So, you know, summer sounds good. And then that would leave me enough time to maybe get one more in, uh, for 2018 and go three and zero in 2018. And uh, is there anyone you want to fight next, or are you just going to kind of leave that up to your management and sort of figure out the next uh, matchup? I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, while I had this fight coming up, I was just really focused on keeping my job and fighting Mike. Uh, but now that it's over and it went well, um, just looking on paper, it makes sense with the Alex Morono fight. Um, I was already getting ready to fight him, um, and then I found out that you know it wasn't going to go through, and then I got the, the pile fight. So, I mean, he ended up getting a first-round finish over... Berkman on the vet. Austin card, yeah, for those who don't And remember. so did I. So, we're you know, we're both like 3-2 and two in the UFC, coming off similar wins uh, on paper, very, very similar backgrounds, black belts who own, you know, jiu-jitsu schools and stuff. And uh, um, he fought for Legacy. He was the champ right when I was fighting for Legacy. I, I thought I would maybe even fight him before we even got to the UFC. Ah, so some history. So a guy that I've known about for a, a while and... I don't really know him. I don't have any animosity towards him or anything, but I think it would just makes the most sense on paper, and I'd like that one. Before I let you go here, I got to know what, what's the plan this week. I'm sure you're getting a little bit of training in, but you're getting any time off at all? Just you know, take it easy. Maybe hang out with the girlfriend. Yeah, I force myself to take a week off. Um, I'm still around the gym uh, with the business side, and just good to see you know all my students and training partners and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm not exercising at all this week. Kind of just taking a, a mental and physical break. And uh, enjoying some good food that I, I miss out on when I'm cutting all this weight. You know, pizza, and I'm from Wisconsin, so brats and cheese and stuff like that. And then uh, we'll get back to it next week. Good stuff. Any particular TV shows you might be watching this week or no? Um, nothing in particular. Maybe I'll actually go see some movies. I don't even know what's been out. You know, I like it super focused when uh, I have a fight coming up. So maybe I'll take a look at some showtimes and... Go, uh, you know, see a flick sometime this week. We'll see. Awesome. Well, uh, Zach, again, congratulations on the win. It was a great performance. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. All right. Yeah, you can uh, find me at, on social media, Facebook and Instagram under just my name, Zach Otto. And then I, on Twitter, I have a handle at the Barbarian MMA. Uh, sponsor today, I really want to throw a shout out to uh, Combat Corner. Um, they're starting to really have a, a world, you know, wide footprint with all their apparel and training gear. If you want anything for, for combat sports, you know, combat corners really made a name, but they're from Milwaukee. 
So I, uh, I personally know Dan LaSavage really well and uh, super good guy. And I'm glad to see he's really creating an empire and uh, has a big footprint on the MMA world. And it's for a reason. They got all the best stuff. So Combat Corner, uh, check them out. Get your gear there. What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.